Surrounded by fame. Please, you may be seated. I am speaking on the subject all round favor or the word surrounded by favor. All round favor. Surrounded by favor. And verse 12. Father, I ask that as we go into your word, you will reposition your people to where they belong. That the power of your word will lift each person from where he is to where he's supposed to be. For when the word of Joseph came, the chains were broken. He was in captivity until his word came. Lord, send your word in the name of Jesus. Let every heart be receptive to your word. And let there be accurate interpretation of your word in the heart of each person. And let your word produce the miraculous in every life. Let there be healings, Lord. Let there be deliverance, Lord. Let there be salvation, Lord. Let there be breakthroughs, Lord. Let homes be touched with your comfort. Let careers be touched with your power. Let academic lives be visited with your goodness. Father, I pray, let ministries receive a new unction today. By the power of your word, let there be special miracles. I pray in particular that each person will be surrounded with favor. And that everyone hearing your word will move to the next level of favor in his life. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. In Psalm 5 verse 12, the scripture said, With favor will you compass me around as with a shield. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor will thou compass him as with a shield. With favor will you compass him as with a shield. God wants you to be surrounded with favor. All around your life to be full of favor as a shield. A shield is an instrument of defense and protection. When favor is around you, you are shielded from what normally would have destroyed you. What destroy others cannot destroy you because you are surrounded with favor. You are ending this year on the note of favor. And you are stepping into this next year with greater favor upon your life. At home, it will be favor. At work, it will be favor. In journeys, it will be favor. In the field, it will be favor. In the city, it will be favor. Before people you know, it will be favor. Before people you don't know, it will be favor. Before those you have met before, it will be favor. Before those you have never seen and you are meeting for the first time, it will be favor. Before angels, it will be favor. By inanimate and animate things, you will be favor. The trees will clap their hands for you. I'm surrounded with favor. My down-sitting favor. My upstanding favor. My stepping in favor. My stepping out favor. He said, with favor will thou compass him about. There will be no leaking area. Yeah. Everywhere you're surrounded by favor. That means there's nowhere you will go and then anything will work against you. Somebody who has never seen the reality of Romans chapter 8 will start seeing it. He said, all things work together for good to them that love God. To them that are the called according to his purpose. You will start seeing the reality of the word of God in your life. Where all things are working for you. When they sell you to the Midianites. It will work for your good. When they accuse you falsely. It will work for your good. 
nothing is permitted to work against you anymore nothing is permitted to work against you anymore and we know we are not guessing and we know that all things not some things and we know that all things all things all things the political situation the choice of the president the parties and their political schemes the economy of the nation the price of fuel the price of exchange of naira and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are the call. Are you one of the called? Uh -huh. To them that are the call according to his purpose. Just keep working and everything will be. That is nothing is permitted to be against you. Anything that's not against you is just wasting his time. It will only work for your good. You will use him for good. Did you hear Lagbaja? He said, It a good only game, you might want to do. He just sang a song that all of us know about. I mean, he's not the one who said that. He sang it and he popularized it. And when I mention it, you will remember it faster. It a good only game, you might want to do. What happened? anything on your way this year and in the year coming that wants to hinder you, you will clear them off your way. I pity anything that stands against you. He said, if God be for us, who can be against us? So everything is expected to surround you with favor. Now, and we have been talking about subject of favor and we will continue till the end of this year. But you see, Favor is special likeness. Favor is what? Special. I like you. And I like you specially. That's what First Chronicles 28, I think verse 3 said. He said, in the family of my father, he made me king because he liked me. Because he what? He liked me. Favor is special likeness. You like everybody, but you like this one especially. So when you are surrounded with it, that means you will be specially liked everywhere you go. They may not know why they like you, but they will just find out that they are liking you all the same. Even God will like you. He said, How be it, the Lord God of Israel chose me. Verse 4. How be it the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be the king over Israel forever. For he had chosen Judah to be the ruler. Okay? And of the house of Judah, the house of my father. Who is hearing? And among the sons of my father, he liked me. To make me king over Israel. He favored me. Favor is special likeness. He said there was a whole nation of Israel. Out of all the other nations, Israel was chosen. There were many tribes. Out of all the tribes, Judah was taken. Out of all that one, again, they now took my family. Out of my family, again, we have many sons. They now took me. Oh, ye biri biri, oh, ye come. <laughs> oh, ye biri biri, oh, ye come. Oh, ye biri biri, oh, ye come. What is it? This is your season of favor. He said, they finally, it, he picked on me because he specially liked me. You will enjoy the special likeness of God. There is what you call surrounded by favor. And I said favor is special likeness. This likeness 
makes you stand out of the crowd. This likeness makes you stand out. Is what you call outstanding favor. Every other person is there. They have the same qualification like you. But you are singled out for blessing. That's what favor is. When you are surrounded with favor, you have outstanding favor. He said, many daughters have done virtuously. But thou excellest them all. Proverbs 31. In 1 Corinthians 15, he said, there are many apostles but I labored more than them all. I'm, I'm different. When it comes to labor, I am outstanding. He said, yet not I, but the favor of God, or the grace of God, which is on me. When the angels came to Mary, they said to Mary, Hail thou that are highly favored. Luke chapter 1 verse 28. Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. So favor singles you out of the multitude. Blessed art thou among the women. She was not the only virgin in that country. But she was selected by God. And Bastati said, God specifically favored her. Fear not Mary. For thou hast found favor with God. Fear not. Because you have found favor. You have been singled out. In the whole billion people on earth. You will be singled out specially. Among white, among black. You will be singled out. Outstanding favor. Look at a girl like um, Esther. In the book of Esther, there was a beauty competition. The next queen was to be selected. The other one had fumbled and had lost the place. That tells you you can also go out of favor. You can be somewhere and something happens, you are no longer liked. Maybe you messed it up, you bungled it, or you messed it up. Or you fucked up like they say. Or you, you messed up like they say. Vashti messed up. And she was removed. My brother, if you are enjoying where you are now, as they say, be careful. It can be lost. It's losable. Judas lost his own. Vashti lost her own. Many people lost their own severally. They were Saul lost his own favor. He was the first king. Yet the first was not the best. He was the first king of Israel. When God was looking for somebody to choose, he selected Saul. It was God's choice. It was the same Wali that chose Saul, the same Wali that chose David, Prophet Samuel. Are you following what I'm prophet. You see, God sent you to somebody, the person misbehaved. God sent you to another person, the other one behaved. So we don't know. That tells me it is not who is your mentor, it is your response to mentorship. Because the same God anointed Saul, Saul messed up. The same God anointed David, David found favor in the sight of God and became a man after God's heart. So what is the variable? It couldn't be Samuel. Nothing was wrong with the anointing of Samuel. So it's not about, I mean, the same Jesus taught the twelve of them. And Judas took his own portion as a son of perdition. Now, nothing was wrong with Elisha. 
But Gehazi got leprosy instead of quadruple portion of the anointing of Elijah. So it is not who taught you. It is who, how you responded to the teaching. So all of us can be sitting down here now, being taught the same thing. But we can go out by way of what we practice. Then the result will be different. That's why people are in the same church. Some people have testimony and some are still struggling. Because they said, do this, some did. They said, do that. He said, what does that mean? Who is hearing what I'm saying now? That's why some people go somewhere and it is well. That's why some people go somewhere and it is not well. Because it is you that determines how the thing occurs to you. What I'm saying anyway is that God will specially favor you. Esther was going for this celebration. She was a lady under mentorship. Mordecai, her uncle or relation, was giving her instruction and she was obeying those instructions. And she got involved with this beauty competition. I think the only one I saw in the scriptures. So it's very difficult to make a doctrine out of it. To say you should be going for beauty competition. But there are many people who will win beauty competitions here. They say let's go and check her out. One whole year they will give them makeovers. They will scrub their face. What do they do to faces? Is there something called scrubbing? <laughs> they will scrub it. They will make. They will panebit it. They will powder it here, powder it there. They will plane it. They will sandpaper it. So at the end, all of them will come out, you know, and then I don't know whether they will do catwalk. And then they will do those things like that. And the king will finally select the one that he wanted. It was a, it was a thing that you needed favor for. You don't confess without favor. You don't be among the runners or, or prize winner without favor. It takes favor. So Esther was among them. You like to see the story. I'm sure you have read it before. Let me take you to Esther chapter 2 verse 12. Now, when every maid's turn was come to go into the king Ahasuerus, after that she had been how many months? 12 months, according to the manner of women. What were they using? For so were the days of their purifications accomplished. To wit, six months with oil of ma, Six months with sweet odors. And with other things for the purifying of the women. Then thus came every maiden unto the king. Whatsoever she desired was given to her to go with her out of the house of the women into the king's house. Verse 15. Now, when the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abia, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her for his daughter was, was come to go in unto the king, she didn't have additional requirement. You know, even in make makeover, there, is, there are natural, you want to look natural. There is a way to make you up to look natural. Am I right? She said, the basic requirement is okay for me. I'm alright with all that is needed. I don't need any extra. She required nothing but what Haggai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of the women appointed. And look at this caveat. And Esther obtained favor. Where? In the sight of some of them. Somebody say all round favor. Everyone that was looking at her favored her. And said this is the lady. This is the most beautiful. This is the one that the king should have. All. That is uncommon favor. That is what? That is what? That's all-round favor. 
that is uncommon favor for everybody to say we choose you no dissenting voice and then she went on she was now brought before the king himself finally verse 17 and the king loved esther how and the king loved esther how about some of the ladies all the women and she obtained grace and favor in his sight how more than all the virtues this is the realm you are going into in the name of jesus after all the preparations they were paraded and then she found favor before all of them when she finally came before the king she found favor he loved her more than all the women and she was finally selected so that he set the royal crown upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti you won't lose your place oh. let me say this you will occupy your own place now even if somebody has been occupying what belongs to you something will happen oh my 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 <laughs> I say if God said this place is your place and somebody is already sitting on your place something is going to happen you will take your place back in the name of Jesus Christ Canaan land is a land that belonged to the children of Israel by destiny but before they arrived some people were already occupying it so God said I will drive them out and I will settle you there So he sent hornets, Emma, Agna, come at that So they were running away out of the land. So the guy came and occupied his own place. And God was doing it for them little by little till their population could occupy the land. See, what you thought you have lost, God is going to bring it back to you. Whatever belongs to you, no one can take it out of your hand. Your place is established. Your place, no one shall take from you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's what all round favor does. It singles you out of the crowd. One. Two. It takes you to the top. It is favor that sets you on top. This Daniel was preferred above all the other presidents. Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. This Daniel was preferred. Joseph was set on top by favor. Joseph was set on top by favor. This favor sets you on top. When Jesus was born, maybe I should go this way. The kings that were there were told by the wise men, Herod was told by the wise men, that another king is born, is going to be superior to all the other kings. So they got mad. They thought they could kill him. But who died eventually? The people that sought the child's life are dead. Whoever goes after your destiny, God will take care of him. In the appropriate manner, your heralds will die in the name of Jesus. Listen, there are some oppositions. The only thing that makes you victorious over them is their elimination. That is not a very good thing to say, but it's a reality of life. You don't beg heralds. All the heralds had to die. None of the heralds in scripture survived. One of them was eaten up by worms instantly. If you are face to face with a herald, there is no there is no alternative to it. It's elimination. This year is running to an end. Whatever has been pursuing your destiny that has not allowed you to attain what you should attain, God will take care of them. They shall be eliminated. If you are dealing with, say, a pharaoh, you don't Pharaohs don't listen, no matter the signs and wonders you perform. 
the Pharaoh will not surrender until there is an elimination. When the first bonds went away, then Pharaoh will become sensible. Some oppositions don't answer to anything other than elimination. If you are dealing with a Jezebel, you cannot say, I am an experienced man in handling women. The only way to handle a Jezebel is for her to fall down, die, and dogs eat her up. Whatever made Elijah run away? The man that called down fire from heaven and fire consumed 50 people and their captain, consumed another 50 and their captain, consumed another 50 and their captain. I mean, the, the, the last one was not consumed. The, the, the same anointing with which he called down fire on Mount Carmel and consumed all the prophets of Baal. Listen, Elijah slaughtered all the prophets of Baal with knife like Boko Haram. He cut their necks, all of them. Now, one woman now came and Elijah gathered his mantle. <laughs> and pick race. Whatever we make a prophet of God of that status, pick race. Now, you must be thinking. So I went on the study of Jezebel. That was in 1991. I said, Lord, I'm in this assignment. I saw prophet Elijah run away. Who will I come across that will require running? And I don't want to run. How do I prepare for the day? So I studied her life. I looked at her father. I looked at her mother. I discovered she was from a house of idol worshippers. She was a very strong, very strong occultic girl. She was a very occultic person. So she was in control of her husband's life. It was whatever she wanted in the house that, that happened. It's a Jezebelic spirit. She was in charge fully all the time. In fact, when the king looks depressed, the king is saying, You can't be easy. Say, You can't be You can't be easy. 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 If you check history, they are there all through. Whether Bible history or country's history, people who are always having some spiritual authority over situations. It looks like personality, but it is something that took over their personality. If you are dealing with a Jezebel, you need to eliminate Jezebel. You need to be anointed with the anointing of Jehoshaphat. The son of Nimshi. <laughs> or the anointing of Jehu. Jehu, the son of Nimshi. He said he rides furiously. Yeah. He, he's a rough rider. I mean, you know. Jehu was the one that destroyed Jezebel. Dogs came. He even wanted to give her a decent burial because he remembered that she was his daughter of a, a king. And then she was also a queen in her own right. So he said, let's give her a decent burial. But before they got there, prophecy had been fulfilled. Your adversaries like Jezebel will be consumed by dogs. Not because we are adversary, you know, I don't, I don't know how to say it. Not because we, have, we want evil for another. But that is the order of anyone who touches the one God has favor. If I tell you more, if you are face to face with an Absalom, there is no restitution. That's your own body. Now against the anointing. Absalom is the son of David. Absalom was very handsome. Absalom died. Ahitophel was a great counselor of David. When he speaks, he was like the oracle of God. But Ahitophel died. There are some oppositions. The only way God does is elimination. Haman, the enemy of Mordecai, there was no alternative but for Haman to hang on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. You don't fight Mordecai's. 
Anybody God has favored, you only favor him. Anybody God has respected, the best thing to do is respect. If you are sure it is God that has his hand on a person, don't go too far in opposition. He may even be wrong. Moses married an Egyptian girl. She was not supposed to marry any Egyptian. He was not supposed to marry any Egyptian. Then Miriam who took care of him and she wee wee on his leg, on her legs and poo poo around him. The same Moses he said, look at you. You are doing this. You are doing that. Leprosy entered. If not for the intercession of Moses, maybe death will have followed. Now, that is how God defends anyone he favors. That's why I say it's like a shield. God will defend you. Against wicked arrows, you will be defended. Against sicknesses, you will be defended. Against accidents, you will be defended. Against kidnappers, you will be defended. Rapists will not be able to get at you. Armed robbers will not come into your household. The Lord will form a shield around you. That's what God's favor does. He said, by this I know that thou favorest me. Because you did not allow my enemy triumph over me. Psalm 41 verse 11. He said, by this I know that you favor me. Because you did not allow my enemies to triumph over me. It will be constant victory for you. All round victory. Because of all round favor. All round victory. Because of all round favor. All round victory. Because of all round favor. Tell your neighbor loud and clear. All round victory. Because of all round favor. By this I know. That thou favorest me. How do I know that God favors me? Verse 11. He said, because my enemy does not triumph over me. By this I know that thou favorest me. Because you did not allow the enemy to triumph over me. Favor will land on you. Can I tell you something? This favor I'm talking about is all around favor will relocate you. I don't know where you are now, but you will be relocated. This favor I'm talking about will reposition you. Is somebody listening to me? You see, favor looks around, meets you where you are. It doesn't consider your, you know, skill or your speed. It doesn't consider your strength. It's not by speed. It's not by strength. No, no. It's not by skill. It's not of him that will it. Not of him that run it. So, it's not speed. It's not skill. Mm -mm. It's not strength. He said, I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. It's favor. Somebody is still listening to me, Abby. <laughs> David after he became king David after he became king he put out an announcement what was the announcement he said is there anybody in the house of Saul that I can show goodness to is there anybody that I can favor and the Holy Spirit spoke to me as I meditated on this he said, just like David was looking for somebody to show favor to, so is the Almighty Father looking around for somebody that he will show favor to. Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I can show favor to? Is there anyone that I can show favor to? Is there anyone I can show favor to? Is there anyone that I can show favor to? So he was searching. Favor is searching for somebody. Can somebody say, I'm here, Lord? Can somebody say, I'm here, Lord? He said, Is there anybody home? You know, some of those bells that ring. Anybody home? Is there, is a doorbell. Is there anybody home? He said, Is there anyone in the house of Saul that I can show goodness to? Is there anyone? I'm looking for somebody to just. 
lavish love upon him. Somebody who cannot pay me back that I want to do good to. God is looking for someone. Can somebody say, I'm here, Lord? If you are there for the Lord, say, I'm here, Lord. Let favor locate me. Let your favor locate me. Oh Lord, let your favor locate me. I am here, Lord. I am here, Lord. I am here for you, Lord. And then they told him that there was one guy. <laughs> they said the boy is uh, living in one village that is not on the map. He said, eh? And he belongs to Saul's family. They said, yes. He said, go and bring him. Ah, they said, no. The boy is a lame guy. He cannot walk. He said, I say, bring him. Lame or not lame. I want to lavish favor on him. So they went and brought one boy. You remember his name? Called Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth. And the king now said to Mephibosheth, sit down at my seat. The same table that I sit is the same table you will be sitting. The same food I eat is the same food you will be eating. Mephibosheth, you are favored. And then he said, look at you. All the things of your father that, they have been that have been taken away, all the land of your father that has been taken away, I restore them to you. Mephibosheth, layman. He cannot walk. You may not be able to walk. You may be incapacitated. You may not have the qualification. You may not have the clouds. You may not have the, you know, the strength. You may not have the savvy and the thing it takes. You may not be qualified on the human level. But favor will locate you. Favor will reposition you. And this is not a subject to make people lazy. And to say favor will locate me so I will improve myself. No. We are talking about favor that overtakes human limitations. No matter how good you are, some people are better than you. So what will make you occupy your place? Favor. What certificate do you have that others do not have? What beauty do you have that others don't have? Do you have two heads? If you have two heads, will, they quali will you be qualified? What steps do you know how to walk that others don't know how to walk? What waist can you twist that others cannot twist? What can you, there's nothing you can do that others cannot do better. What food can you cook that others have not cooked and ten of what you are cooking? What language do you want to language that others have not linguistic? What braggado or confidence, whichever one, do you want to display that we have not seen greater bravery and greater braggados? What do you have? There is nothing. Unless favor is speaking for you, you can't get anything. We did not get the land by our own strength. Psalm 44 verse 3. We got it because thou hast a favor unto us. It shall be delivered on the platform of favor. That's why you and I must be baptized with favor today. I'm favored. I always tell you that how many people do you see the dash homer? It takes a favored person. You can get him some money and give him. But to look at all your cars and say this one is good for this person. You, the person must have come to your heart. You have brother. You have sister too. You have friends. You have relations. You have people that have helped you at one time or the other. You could send it to them. But it now came to, it is my name that rang a bell. Listen up. Favor will make your name come clear in the hearts of God. I've been favored though. My first car was a Mercedes Benz 200. First car in life. Delivered on the platform of favor. 
level 8 school officer of the early 80s. So I drive to teach in school with Mercedes Benz at that time. Those who live at that time know that you have to be favored. Because your principal's car is different from your own. You needed sense to drive into the school compound. You needed what? Sense to drive into the school compound. As a classroom teacher. When your principal. You are the one completing the rest. I mean that's. <laughs> he said. He that findeth a wife. Findeth a good thing. And you can't even marry until you are favored. That's why some people, they say, this girl is not fine, but she's married. You that you are finest. Nobody said anything. You will see poor man. He doesn't have money. The girl is following him everywhere. Everywhere he goes. She just favor him. She just like him. That's favor. He that findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor. Is favor that gives you anything, including wife, husband, or children. You are not the first person that will have a wife and sleep with her. It's not all the people that sleep with their wife that have children. It's favor that gave it to you. It's not all those who write exams that pass. And all of them read, maybe read better than you. Some people slept in the library, they didn't go home. They didn't bath till they went to the exam hall. To bath will be a waste of time. So they went into the exam and they still failed. So your passing is favor. Who is here? You see, won't you see the uh, notice of wedding that was given to us today? Is that not favor? Ah, you are highly favored. You don't find wife without favor. And then you don't become the father of both bride and groom without being favored. His favor. This young girl came to this church when she was eight years old with her mom uh, and stayed here for some time, then went into another country. How will you feel that those who went to another country will meet again? His favor. Is what? Favor. Either findeth a wife or findeth anything, findeth a good thing and obtaineth. Favor is favor that gives you husband. Look at Ruth. She has had a terrible experience in marriage. Her husband had died. His brother had died. Her mother-in-law has said she's bitter. Don't follow me. And then she went following. She just liked Mama Naomi. She just went away ahead with her. There was no food in the house. She had to go walk so that they can eat. Oh, it was work. She went to work. That something happened. The next step you will take, something will happen. <laughs> Your connection will be settled in the name of Jesus. Because Mama Rubo is number Jojo Kosinule. Tio Jade Lord, she said, So she said, Let's go. The first field she entered was the field of Boaz. Boaz, according to Ruth chapter 3 verse 1, was a mighty man of wealth and he was single. Then he came into the farm that day. He saw this girl busy working smartly. He said, oh, who is this girl? He was a disciplined guy. He wasn't just looking for somebody to sleep with. No, no. Who is this girl? They said, ah, she's that girl. He said, okay, I've heard of her. He said, make sure you leave some things for her favor. Make sure she doesn't struggle much. And if she needs refreshment, please give her. Anytime she goes to drink water, don't ask her anything. Any, and tell her not to go to any other farm. She should be coming to this farm. Ah! You will be favored. Your bread will be sure. Your water will be guaranteed. In the name of Jesus Christ. The next application you make as a job seeker, God will fix you up there. The next interview, you will be favored there. In the name of Jesus Christ. If Mephibosheth, the lame man, could be lifted to sit with king, I don't know where you are. 
favor will reposition you. Favor will change your level. Favor will bring you to dine with kings. Favor will take you to the top. The same favor that took Joseph to the top will take you to the top. God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name. That was Jesus. Philippians chapter 2. Am I right? The same name of Jesus will make you to be favored. When he was a big Jesus, three wise men came. What did they bring? Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. I'm, I'm about to close. Each one of them significant. And among them was frankincense and incense. Frank incense. Incense was an instrument used for worship. In the New Testament, it is not physical. In the New Testament, it represents your prayer. One. Your character. Two. Your prayer. Three. Your worship. Four. In the New Testament, an incense is not the turare that you carry around. In the New Testament, it represents your prayer, your character, your praise to the Almighty God. That's what it represents. Your giving God praise goes to Him as an evening sacrifice. Your prayer comes to Him as an incense. And your character among people speaks about the sweetness of your person. Whether you are spreading what is an odor or a good smell. Obuko. Wale kilo jele. Oonde. Asin kontie. So, that is how all of us are. We all have a smell. Our smell will be inviting or repelling. Everybody has a body odor. That body odor could be inviting or repelling. Everybody has a spiritual B.O. Genesis 27, 27. He said, see, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which the Lord has blessed. So they brought frankincense that sweet odor to him. All through the Old Testament, like maybe Jeremiah 17 verse 6, you will see that they bring incense to praise God and to worship God in the Old Testament. Every sacrifice was with something smelling up to God. Either the burnt offerings of the animals or a sweet aroma. That's why in some spiritualists, you find a lot of uh, burning of candle, burning of incense, a lot of spraying of uh, you know perfumes and uh, things that smell nice. Am I right? It has a spiritual connotation. And Jesus, when he was a baby, they gave him. A frankincense and this is the season of Jesus's birthday I see a special smell being placed over your life in the name of Jesus not only that in Matthew 26 and John 12 in Matthew 26 Mary came to him in the house of a leper and she broke an alabaster box of precious ointment it was an ointment but it had a sweet fragrance it was an ointment but it had a what sweet fragrance it's the person you love you give such gifts isn't it one of my daughters here gave me one fine uh, spray on my birthday which was just a few months ago I called her I said boy this kind of spray is uh, classical oh. This one is a um, designer, and this one is not from this country. <laughs> this Mary broke a 
an alabaster box of oil. I don't want to go into all of that tonight. She poured it on Jesus. The whole place was smelling fine. The disciples saw it. Please follow me carefully here. Are you still around? This is the last service, so permit me. Till, June, till January 12th. They say, ah! You work with you. All the disciples of Jesus, can you imagine? They envy the master. You know, some people don't like to see their leader enjoying any bit of life. They want to go to my garden. That's why I want my tea. I need it. Okay. He said, Why are you wasting this oil on him? Ah, ah, this thing should have been sold so others could have been using it. For you, you should not use it. That's how people hate pastors. If a pastor is riding church, everybody will be talking. But if a businessman is riding one, it is all right. If a musician is riding one, it is all right. I don't understand. If you wear a nice dress like the one I'm trying to wear, you say, where, <laughs> where did he get it? <laughs> I know things are changing. But you see, the world is still like that. This is luxury. This is what? Luxury. And as a spiritual person dwelling on charity, you should not enjoy any luxury at all. That was their philosophy. You should live an ascetic life. You should swear the oath of poverty. Like in the papacy and like in my parents' church. Where you swear to live poor all your life. What they expected Jesus to do, and that's not what the Jesus of the Bible did. Do. They said this thing should be sold and the money given to the poor. They were showing that their mind was very good to poor people. But the Bible said they knew that it was because they want to steal money, not because they had the love for the poor. You know what Jesus now said? He said, Allow this woman to do what she wants to do. Allow this woman to do what she wants to do. Don't trouble her. She has done a good thing. She has done what? This is in the New Testament. Though. Jesus was put, was an ointment that had a sweet odor was placed on him. In the New Testament. Jesus, the Son of God, as a baby. And then as a mature minister. They were spraying him with special perfume. Now, those who study scriptures and who did some history of labor at that time said that the cost of that alabaster box of oil is the average annual salary of a worker in the year annual income that's if you are on 1.3 every that the the alabaster box of oil costs 1.3 if you are on a seven digit you know you know annual salary it costs seven digits and it was broken and poured on jesus no wonder there was indignation and Jesus said, allow her. Today, smell something special will come upon you. Everywhere you go, a holy smell will be around you. The alabaster box of oil on Jesus will be manifesting in you. You know what Jesus said? He said, she has done a good thing. She has prepared me for my burial. What is his burial? His burial is the burial of your old man. His burial is what? The burial of my old nature. Jesus tigbe are eshewa obesi abibeko oshie obekini o iya oshekini o demon oppression and oshekini o whatever has been negative in your life, I see it buried in the name of Jesus. He said she did this for my burial. And he came actually, the main reason why Jesus came was to die on the cross for the sin of mankind. That is ultimate destiny. Not just healing the sick, not just opening the blind eye, not just making people eat. He came to do all that. But the ultimate destiny, follow me carefully, of Jesus coming to the world was to die for the sin of humanity, pay the price for our sin. So she prepared him for destiny fulfillment it was a fragrance to fulfill the major reason 
the nucleus, the center, the anigugu, the main, the main, the cocoa of the matter. Have you ever seen cocoa master? Make I tell you the cocoa. <laughs> the cocoa of the issue is coming to be buried so that your sin will be buried. We died with him in baptism. We rose with him in resurrection. The old nature was buried with him. That was why Jesus came. That your nature of sin will be destroyed. That your sickness will be destroyed. So when she was praying him, she was saying, this old body will go into the grave. As you rise from here today, everything that represents the old will pass away from your life. Somebody say, my sickness is buried here now. My sin is buried here now. My poverty is buried here now. I'm walking out of here with resurrection life, with new power. Uh, uh, in the name of Jesus. When somebody dies, you see that they use a lot of perfume all over the place so that the dead body will not be smelling. Am I right? They want them to get a sweet fragrance. So your old body is dying. A new fragrance is coming on you. I ask those of us who came with our fragrance, I mean, who use fragrance normally at home before? Not that they said, come and look, perfume, church, what? No, I didn't say so. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you won't be using ordinary perfume after today. You will be using anointed perfume. And every day you put it on, the old will die in your life. Rejection will die in your life. Jealousy will die in your life. Failure will die in your life. Then a new fragrance will come. Everywhere you appear, people say, ah, ah, I like that girl. I like that boy. I like that man. He must get the job. Who is listening here? Those who don't use it, don't worry. Just bring out some other things you normally use. Your pomade. And your oil. For somebody like me, I use baby oil to keep myself going. But I always spray a man's spray or a woman's spray or any spray that is fine. Like this one. That somebody dash me. Praise the Lord. <laughs> if you have one here, can I see? You don't have to remove it from the box. But if you do, you have not seen. Lift it up. Those of you who brought your handkerchief. Let me see it up. Now, I brought a bundle. <laughs> because I'm going out with favor here. I want to ask God to touch what is in your hand here. And I want to ask him to bless this particular spray. And every spray you will start using from now. They will not just be ordinary spray. They will signify the burial of your old nature. Ah.